Testing, testing. Can you, everybody hear me? Can anybody hear me? I'm on. Uh, I'm. I'm talking about the people on uh, YouTube. Can you hear me on YouTube? Make a comment if you can hear me on YouTube. Okay. Yes. Perfect. 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 Hello, everybody. Where's everybody from? Tell me where you guys are from. Um. You know, I'm. I'm I'm in Sacramento, California. Who we got? We got uh, Wayne. How's it going, Wayne? And Persona USA. How you doing? So you Florida. Okay. Jeremy's in San Diego. Wayne's in Maryland. Nice, 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 nice. Okay. Yeah. Anybody here process servers already? Or are you, are you just thinking about it? That's German. Did I say it wrong? Persona. I can't even get it. I'm not even going to try because I, <laughs> I, I, I'm I, going to mess your name up. I don't want, I'm apologizing for messing your name up. Oh, okay. Okay. I got TikTok going also. Um, if you're on TikTok, so you're in Bakersfield. Okay. What I recommend that you do is go to my, click the link up in my bio and go to my YouTube channel because I'm going to be sharing my screen on some of the things that we're going to talk about. And it's, it's you know, you want to see what I'm doing. You, you, I'm not going to be able to do it here on TikTok. It'll have to be on YouTube. It'll have to be on YouTube. Oh, okay. So Wayne's a private investigator and a server. Okay, that's good. And and then uh, Persona, Persona is a, a a process server. Okay. Well, great, 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 great. Yeah. So um, I'm I'm in California. I am a uh, private investigator. And I am a process server. Um, and basically, you know, I've been, you know, so uh, Jeremy is a notary. Okay. I used to be a notary at one time. Yeah, I used to be a notary at one time. Thanks for the likes on uh, TikTok. Um, and I make a living you know, as a process server. The majority of the work that I do is process serving. That's the majority of the work that I do. Even though I'm a private investigator, you know, I kind of give you a background. I used to be a police officer, left the force um, and started working for as a private investigator, started working for criminal defense attorneys. Um, and that's kind of how I got started in serving documents is the defense attorneys needed people to come to court. They says, hey, can you go serve these documents? And I would go serve the documents. And then um I was like, well, this is pretty easy, you know, because, you know, doing the private investigator work was a lot of report writing, you know, and doing stuff like that. But serving documents, I just go hand a piece of paper to a person and leave, you know, and I was done. I was like, OK, that's that's pretty simple. And so I started, you know, marketing myself online to get more um, people to hire me as a process server. And. The first things that I did, you know, is I built websites and I tried uh, Google AdWords. You know, I paid for advertising, um, and you know, and, and it, it, you know, it takes a while for your website to really catch on in Google. So, you, so really, I didn't get no really much business that way. So, the way I got business is I would go to the small claims courthouse. Now, this is a key because I know the courthouse here in Sacramento County just opened back up. And so I'm actually going to go down there next week and try to make some videos to kind of show you what you can do to, I call it stirring the pot is what I call is stirring the pot um, to get your own process server clients. Um, and that's what I ended up doing is I would go to the, the small claims courthouse and I would pull up all the new cases that were filed within the past couple of days. And so what happens is let's say somebody does something to you and you need to take them to small claims court. You file your paperwork, you pay your fee, and now you need to serve your small claims paperwork. And in California, it's an SC100, plaintiff's claim in order to go to small claims court. That's what it is. So, um, you know, you can view the actual case on the computers at the courthouse. So I would type in the case number, get the uh, the, the the get the record. It was and on page, page two where it has the plaintiff's name and the defendant's names and address. And so I I would 
take a picture of the plaintiff's information, which is their name, address, and phone number. And so I would send a letter to the plaintiff and I would call the plaintiff on the phone at the courthouse. So I, what I would do is after I took my pictures, I would go down to the cafeteria and I would just call the plaintiff says, hey, this is Lance. I'm a process server down here at the small claims uh, courthouse. And I see that you recently filed a small claims action against whoever it was. And I say, do you have any questions? That was my case. Do you have any questions? And they would tell me, oh, well, I already took it to the sheriff to have it served. And I've, I've said, OK, well, great. Well, if they aren't able to serve it for some reason, because the person may work and the sheriff is only going to go between nine and five Monday through Friday, I'm going to send you a letter with my card so you can call me back if you need it served in the evening or on a weekend. Um, so that's how I um, started getting my work, you know, and I call it stirring the pot. And I would get two to three a day doing that. Now, it was a lot of effort because I had to physically go to the courthouse, wait in line to get on the computer. Um, and then on the computer, I would go in each record. And you have to you have to kind of understand how case numbers work. That's one of the, you know, because I try to train some people about how to do this, but it's the case numbers that they have an issue with. It's like, how do I find out the case numbers? And so because once you get that first case number, then you the next time you go back the next day, you just jump to the next case number, to the next case number, to the next case number, to the next case number. Um, and that's how you would keep track of the case numbers. And um, and so that's how I got the business, you know, on my own, you know, without having to pay for advertising. It really wasn't any even though I had a website and back then. You could text people and not get, you know, because now you can't really send unsolicited text messages because they didn't pass some rule. But back then, I would actually text people and then put my website link in the text. And people would, and then they would, you know, so they get a call from me and I'd leave a message if they didn't answer. They would get a text from me. Um, and then they get a letter from me with my business card. And so they got three contacts from me. And so that's how I was able to get small claims um, clients. Now, um, let's see if you got any questions here. Okay, so on TikTok, what I, if you're on TikTok, watching on TikTok, go up in my bio, go watch it on YouTube because I'm, I'm going to be sharing this screen because there's going to be some things you want to see what I'm going to show, show people on YouTube on, you know, on process server and getting clients. And I'm not going to share, I can't share it on TikTok, but I'm going to share it on YouTube. Let's see over here. You're also a notary wedding or fishing in. Okay. So I got a process of Paula's in uh, Fresno. Okay. Florida um, courthouse. Okay. And we got somebody from Texas. Okay. So we got a pretty much of a range of people on here. Uh, what kind of GoPro do you use? Um, I don't use a GoPro. I don't know if you can see it here. This is the is the camera system that I use. Um, it's basically a body cam. Here, I'm going to share the link. I'm going to share the link to it real quick in the comments here. Hold on. I'll share the link to it. Because in California, is a two-party state. So... You really can't record people's conversations without their consent. So I so I used to wear like a, a Bluetooth earpiece, you know, that you people couldn't even tell it was a camera. I had all kinds of different cameras, but I found this here where I don't have it. I can turn off the audio so it doesn't record audio. Um, it's kind of bulky, but it has this, uh, you know, this magnetic holder and it just slides in. And, you know, when I'm getting ready to go do a serve, I just press this button down here. Can you hear this? Recording start. See, that's how I do it. Recording start. Okay. And then I, there's a button that press the button again. And it turns and it stops the recording. recording stop. And then there's another button that turns it off. So um, this is what I use when I'm out serving um, people. Um, and, you know, and then there's this, it's got like a little 
plug where you can plug it in and then put it on your computer and you can get access to the videos. And I use a lot of the videos to make content. I use a lot of the videos to make content, you know, for my product to attract people that are looking into becoming a process server. Um, because while out serving, people was asking me, you know, you know, people that would hire me says, what do you do? And how do you do it? And how do I become a process server? And I would, you know, I would tell them, well, you know, this is what it is. You like it's because in California, you have to register to become a process server. So um, everybody from California, put the county that you're, you're registered in. Everybody from California, put the county that you're registered in. So you have to go, um, you know, when you register, you go to your local recorder's office and then you have to get a live scan fingerprint, pay a fee. So we got Fresno County, okay pay a fee you got to get a process server bond um and then they give you a processor and then once everything comes back you get a process server okay so we got sacramento county okay then you get a process server id card basically and then you and then they put you in their database at the uh, recorder's office and so now you're a process server you're a registered process server now other states have different requirements. So like um, Wayne, what are the requirements to be a, become a process server in your state? What are the requirements? Um, okay, so we got uh, Santa Clara County. Okay, there's a process server there. But you know, it just depends on the state on what the requirements are to become a process server. Like is anybody from Texas? Oh yeah, culture leadership today, if you're from Texas. Um, the way I understand Texas is you have to take a training course and you have to take a training course. Um, if you're in Texas from a certified course that's registered with their, um, with the state. Now I have a process server training course, but I'm not certified for Texas. Um, my training course to teach people to how to become process servers is set up with California forms. Okay. The only is from New Mexico and there's no requirement. See, some states you just say you're a process server and you're a process server. Um, but the course that I offer, it has California forms. So when I'm saying forms, process servers, let's kind of back up process servers, the they serve legal papers to people, businesses, government agencies. Okay. So Wayne says you only got to be 18. Okay. And so basically, People hire me to serve restraining orders, which are domestic violence, civil harassment, elder abuse, workplace violence. Those are the different type of California restraining order forms. You've got small claims papers. You've got divorce papers. You've got child custody papers. You've got um, subpoenas for business records. And you've got like a summons and complaint for lawsuit papers, um, you know, that you can serve. Those are the common types of documents that I, that you serve. And every state is a little different. So in my course that I offer, I go over those types of documents and the proof of service forms that are done once you serve the document. So when you serve the document, you have to notify the court the date time location that the person was served so that's called a proof of service form um you know that's called a proof of service form and so in my course i teach you those so you know you, you learn all that and you under, and there's different types of serves you know you got personal service substituted service service by mail service service by publication and in the course goes over all that so you know different states have different requirements but it's basically the same thing. You know, a personal service, you hand it to them. If they won't accept it, you drop it at their feet. That's a personal service. Um, and so, you know, if you want to type, sign up for my course, there's a link in, in the, the video description where you can, you know, you can sign up to become a process server and take my process server training course. And then when you take that course, I'll mentor you to get started in the business. So you'll be able to join my Facebook group. And if you've got questions, you know, you know, you're going to go, you got a certain kind of serve. What do you do? Or how does it, how does it work? Um, you know, things like that. 
And then, you know, I'll mentor you with that. Um, but that's the easy part. I mean, literally, because you're start, you become a process server is your own business. You're basically starting your own business. Um, and, you know, and so that's the easy part. The hardest part is getting your clients. That's the hardest part. Now, what are you guys doing that are process servers right now? What are you doing to get your clients? You know, what are you doing to get clients to serve? Okay, so culture leader left California, taxes too high, makes sense. Okay, and uh, Gary Pettidor, you can't wait to pay for the course. Okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's see here with some more comments. Um, you call law firms. Okay. That's that's one of the ways to get them. Um, the alphabet and proof. Okay. <laughs> right. Now, Lindsay, what is the alphabet paying you per entity or per person to serve? That's let's talk about the alpha. Everybody that knows what the alphabet is, is if you're a process server, you can work for large process serving firms and they give you work to go serve documents to people and businesses or whatnot. You can do that. Um, and they're, you know, they pretty much, you know, they have a, you know, a lot of stuff going on. So you can pretty much stay busy, but they don't pay that much. So say Lindsay says $25 to $50 to go serve documents. And how many times do they require that you go to make an attempt to serve those documents? Oh, see, yes, there it is. ABC Legals with uh, Paula Anderson said, yep. And, you know, here's the thing. If you're just getting started and you don't have clients, so, you, you know, they want you to go five to seven times. When people hire me, they get three attempts. Um, three attempts They when they hire me, unless it's a unlawful detainer, which is an eviction, then they get six attempts. Like tonight, I had to go back out again um to make an attempt on an unlawful deta detainer uh, you know um because they're not opening the door so i have to make my six attempts let's let's check the comments real quick okay so we got uh stacy you're saying you're not getting any nowhere here okay well i'm on i'm on youtube you got to click that link and go to my youtube you can watch them get more in-depth information Okay. So you're already a server. You just need my first one under your belt. Okay. Okay. So you have, and so Wayne has a website, a member of a national associated professional process server and serve manager. Okay. And so national association of process servers is basically a directory and set and serve manager is a directory as well, or, you know, and serve manager is a, um, process server software that's what i use um when i'm you know to manage my caseload that's what i use to manage my caseload um and so um but yeah so you can work for you know the abc or you know there's other large companies and they you know you got to go six seven times and only going to pay you 20 to 30 dollars for six or seven trips um but one of the the students that i mentor he works for a for the um, alphabet company and i keep telling him and, and he's figuring this out i was like you really infiltrated them because you use you use that data to figure out locations now this is my specialty so everybody pay attention you figure out locations that get served multiple documents at once so if you go to a location that is like a registered agent and they get served multiple times, like in Sacramento, it's Corporation Service Company doing business as CSC Lawyers Incorporating Service. That's a registered agent in Sacramento. And I market to, to, to serve documents there. And I go, I serve two to three, sometimes four documents every day to that one location in one trip you know okay but i go there you know three four times a day not times a day but i take a few of them at one time and i'm done and it's no dogs i'm not i don't have to go multiple times um and it's it's easy literally you walk in 
to a, it's a business. That's all they do is accept service or process. I drop the documents off, write down the clerk's name, leave, go into serve manager on my phone, type in the serves, and then I'm done. You know, that's that's basically that's my niche because that's what I do is I is I niche market on specific locations that get served multiple times. Here's another example. Um, California Department of Motor Vehicles. They get served every day. They have a legal department. And the only place that they get served at is here in Sacramento. So I have content about serving DMV. Um, you know, and, and that's a niche. Lindsay says, what about jails? Jails is also a niche. Jails is also a niche. And literally, I made some content because I had somebody that, that needed some, some documents served to somebody in jail. So I had to go down there and do it. So I made content about serving the jail. I just haven't uploaded it yet and created the content on my websites just yet. But literally, that's a location because people are in jail get served divorce papers, restraining orders, lawsuit papers. I mean, they're, you know, but they that, you know, it's one location. You know, let's see here. What about I'm hoping to get some registered agents? Yeah. Um, and so it's a, the key is how do you find the registered agents is, you know, that's the, that's the issue is how do you find them? Um, and one of the ways to do it is going to your secretary of state's website and doing a registered agent search to see who the registered agent is for certain companies, because that's where the documents will be served at. And so, um, what is it? What software do I use? Serve Manager. Serve Manager. Now, my website has, um, you know, I have forms on my website that people will fill out when they want to, you know, when they want to order a serve or something like that, you know. But I use Serve Manager for all my, um, you know, for keeping track of all my records. You know, I use Serve Manager for that. Yeah. And so I'm going to show you, uh, you know, what my website looks like here. Let me share my screen. Hold on. Can everybody see the screen here? This is this is my main website. Got a little video. Um, you know, and it's just it's nothing fancy. I use WordPress when I'm building a website. I build my own websites. Um, I learned how to do it. I'm actually making some content online to teach people how to do it, um, but I just haven't put it together yet. But I build my own websites um, and I have multiple websites for specific locations. And here's, you know, nothing fancy, um, you know, callers call. I have the phone number here. And if you click that number, like from your cell phone, it's going to bring it up on the phone. So it'll dial, you know, you can dial it. And then, you know, I just have the nation, you know, just some basic information. But if you see serve manager, these are all the same fields that are in my contact management software that I use for serve manager. OK, and these are the rates that I charge. So like to go to my registered agents, one hundred twenty five dollars for one trip. OK, and these are just the rates I need to raise them, you know, to raise them up a little bit because of inflation. Um, you know, but it's nothing fancy, just a form. And when somebody fills this form out, it actually gets, it'll get emailed. The data will get emailed to me. And then what I do is I'll send them a, um, an invoice, um, you know, online invoice that I, you know, I use QuickBooks. Who do you guys use to process your payments? Who do you use to process your payments? I use QuickBooks. Yeah, I used to use PayPal. Um, I used to use Stripe and um, Square. Those were the ones, but I use QuickBooks now. That's what I use to um, process my payments. Okay, so Square, MX Merchant. Okay, and that's, the, you know, you just have to find the right service, um, you know, to, to that makes it easy and convenient for you to do it. But literally, I do all my billing on my cell phone. Literally, I'll be on the cell phone. Somebody sends me an email with some documents. 
I'll forward the documents to FedEx Print and Go, and then I'll copy the email address and the name and put it in QuickBooks and send them an invoice. Literally. Oh, you you you're also a QuickBooks certified pro. Okay, I'm no pro. <laughs> I'm no pro. I know how to send an invoice, but ask me to give somebody a re, uh, a refund. I have to go watch a video on how to do it because I don't know. It, you know, uh huh. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, and so um. One of the things I want to show you too is. You know, people want to know about finding registered agents. So we're going to, I'm going to pull it up here and I'm going to do a quick search. Um, let me pull it up. Hold on a sec. So give me a business that is like, that you know of, give me a business that you want me to check to see who their registered agent is. Okay. Yeah, give me a business that you want to find out who the registered agent is. So like a business name, like Facebook or, you know, something like that. Somebody give me a business. Enterprise. Oh, you got to pay me in advance. Okay. So enterprise. So we're going to, let me share my screen here. Hold on. Oh, where is it? Let's share the screen. Okay, this is the California Secretary of State's business search. Okay, every state has a Secretary of State, and you should be able to search for free. Some states may charge you. You may have to sign up but you're checking to figure out who the registered agent is. Now, basically what a registered agent is, is it's a person or a business that accepts service of process for corporation, limited liability companies, limited partnerships. And I go after the ones that it's a business that does that, like corporation service company or Paracorp, or, you know, there's, a, there's several other ones that do it. So we're going to type in enterprise. And now enterprises probably has a whole bunch of different types of names. So is it enterprise rental car? Let's just type in enterprise and see what happens. Yeah, so it, that's a whole bunch of enterprise. So be a little bit more specific. Enterprise or Hertz car rental. Let's try that one. Hertz car rental. Copy. So let's do it again. Let's go Hertz car rental. Hertz car rental. Nope. Let's try Hertz. Hertz International, Hertz Incorporated. Hertz. Enterprises, Hertz Family Foundation, Hertz Fleet. So sometimes you have to do a little research to see, you know, which one it is. Hertz Growth or Furniture Systems, Hertz Investment Company, Hertz Realty Group. So there is no Hertz Car, Hertz Car Sales LLC. Okay. Hertz Agency. Hertz claim management. Okay, let's just, let's assume that it was Hertz Car Sales LLC. Okay, so on this list, it gives you the agent. You can see the agent right here. That's the agent. Okay, so that's who gets served the documents. So if we go to Hertz, um, where was it? Or was it, which one did we say it was? Let's just say Hertz uh, Vehicles LLC. Let's just say that's the one. Or the Hertz Corporation, that's probably going to be the one. It's active, corporation out of states. And CT Corporation is their registered agent. 
Okay, so that's the registered agent of Hertz, the Hertz Corporation. So if you need to find out their address, you just click on the Hertz Corporation and it'll bring it up over here and it shows that um, CT Corporation, it shows that their, their address is in New York, but in Cal, if you're if this is a California case and you need to serve them in California, you're going to end up going to um, Glendale, and these names are all the people that are appointed from the registered agent that can accept the paperwork. So they're probably going to be at the front counter. One of these people would be at the front counter, but you would serve it at this location right here. Okay, so if I was trying to build content around this registered agent, I would make websites, YouTube videos, um, Facebook posts, all around this, uh, I would use, use this address as my URL. I mean, literally, because you know, let's, do a, let's do a Google search for CT Corporation, CT Corporation. Um, Glendale, California. And see, it comes up, it gives you their address. You see the address right here? So somebody wants to serve Hertz, they would, they're going to go to the Secretary of State, do the search and find out at CT Corporation in Glendale. And they'll, they'll go to Google and type in CT Corporation in Glendale. And then you get, you get, um, you know, information on serving them. So, you know, and then what you're looking for is, do you see any process servers on this page? Do you see any process servers on this page? Anybody see any process servers on that page? You don't? Well, what, hold on, what's... What is this? Where is it? Los Angeles Process Server.net. CT Corporation Los Angeles Process Server on page one. Okay. Let's see if there's any videos of anybody process servers on page one. Nope. No videos. But you've got a process server that's, you know, rank number three. So let's click on their website and look with it. Okay, Los Angeles process server and CT Corp services. Do you need a Los Angeles process server to serve CT Corporation? That's their website, literally. Okay, that's their website. Nothing fancy. A simple website. But it ranks for that specific term. Okay, so when somebody's searching on the Secretary of State for CT Corporation, you want your website to show up on that first page because people will hire you that way. So let's do another search. Let me get another business name. You said uh, Walmart. Wayne said Walmart. So we're going to do Walmart. The Walmart Inc. And so this one shows FTB suspended. So it's probably a little di something different. Walmart Health, Walmart Inc, active, out of state. See, it's CT Corporation. See, it's still CT Corporation in Glendale. So that's where it would go. So, and you know, you literally you're building content around CT Corporation. Um, and then see, people would search, type that in, and then your website would pop up. Okay. That's, that's basically how you get, I get those serves going to CSC Lawyers Incorporating Service. So I'm going to show you, let's go, let's do another one. Let's do um, Airbnb. Okay, so we see Airbnb right here. It shows Corporation Service Company, which will do business in California, CSC Lawyers Incorporating Service. So this is what most people do. They'll copy this. 
They'll paste that into Google, hit enter. Okay, so you've got ads at the top. Okay. And then you have their website. And then you have process servers, registered agent process server. You have somebody here using the address as the URL. You have another company that's talking about serving them. You have another company that's talking about serving them. Does this name look familiar right here? Does that name look familiar? <laughs> Does that name look familiar right there? That's my website. Okay, this is one of my websites. Open the tab. Okay, and literally, um, all I did was take pictures of the door. I put the address in the description and the company name in the description. I got the same video and I got the same form, a form on here that they fill out when they need to serve documents there. That's simple. That's how I uh, build content. So that's my website. And guess what? This is my website also. It's a different website. See, same thing. CSC Lawyers and Corporating Service, another website, nothing fancy. With a button that takes them to the order process server page. Okay. Um, and then if we go back and we got another one here. This one here, the URL is actually the address. This is a little trick because this isn't a little trick that I use, but if you open that up, that's my website also. Okay, another video, you know, nothing fancy, simple, uh, simple WordPress websites. You know, so that's how I'm able to get so many serves going to um, you know, that's how I'm getting so many serves going to um, you know, corporation service company or CSC lawyers. Let's see here. What is somebody having a question here? Let me look. I'm in New Jersey and trying to serve CT Corp in California. Can I just serve CT Corp office in New Jersey? I'm no attorney, it's not legal advice, but CT Corp is, is in every state. CT Corp is in every state. So you just have to find the address of the CT Corp in New Jersey, if it's in New Jersey, and then you just go serve them there. Yes, you just go serve them there. Anybody got any other questions? Okay, somebody here on TikTok. If you're on TikTok, you should be click the link and go to uh, my, my profile and go to my YouTube channel. You should be watching on YouTube because you can see all the stuff that I'm talking about and what I'm talking about doing. But they ask a question is, um, should a server be concerned about subject taking pick of their license plate in retaliation? I'm not worried about it. For one, they can't, you with a license plate in California, you can't get my address. Not as not as public. Now, if you was in law enforcement or something like that, well, that's a different story. And when you do it in law enforcement, there's a there's a record of that. So they can figure it out who did it. But I'm not worried about that. Yeah. Because I really don't serve people most of the time. I'm serving registered agents or government agencies. Every now and then I'll serve because I outsource a lot of the work. So that's another thing, too, is if you take my course. Um, and I get a serve that's not in an area, but it's in your area, I'll, you know, outsource it to you and then we'll just split the money. But I always double the rate, you know, for stuff that's not in my area that I'm going to split. So you really going to make what you would normally make serving documents. Yeah. And so that's literally, um, you know, how to figure out, you, anybody got another company Do you want me to search to see who their registered agent is? Okay, so um, 
maybe okay so we're going to talk about some, can you please talk about some of the legal issues that a process server company may face how can may a process server company be sued by the client okay so i'm going to assume that you're talking about the person that hired you is going to sue you because you didn't do your job correctly is that what you're talking about um You know, I'm going to assume that's what you're talking about. And and literally, people are going to, if you're in business, you run the risk of getting sued. I mean, that's just literally what happens. You run the risk of getting sued. And so um, if you do good business and if somebody hires you to make a serve, you actually go to the place to make those attempts or to do the serve and you thought the paperwork correctly, Um you know, you should be covered, but I'm no attorney. It's not legal advice because what I explain to my clients is they're hiring me to make attempts. There's no guarantee that I'm going to get them. So you're hiring me to make an attempt, so many attempts to go. And then when I fill out the declaration or the proof of service form, I'm signing it under a penalty of perjury. So it's true. It's got to be true. Otherwise I wouldn't sign it. So that's, you know, how, how I cover myself on being sued. Now, Let's just say the person that you're serving wants to sue you. But what are they going to sue you for? Because you're not going to break any property. You're not going to enter their property. You're not, you know, because I mean, you're not going to do anything where you're trespassing, even though in California, you can do a minor trespass to serve documents. When, I, when I'm saying a minor trespass, that means you can go up on their property to their front door to, hand, to knock on the door but you can't go in if the gate is locked you can't force entry um so that's kind of what it is and let's see here next one is um can i talk a little bit about serving divorce papers now divorce papers you know there you there's really no different in serving divorce papers because you have different kind of serves you got personal service substituted service service by publication and service by posting. Divorce papers are served by personal service. So when a client hires me to serve divorce papers, I'm guaranteeing that I'll make three attempts to go to the location that they that they provide to, to attempt to serve the other party. So that's how divorce papers are served. There's nothing special about them. It's just a matter of, you know, you go to the door, you knock on the door, and if they open the door, you hand it to them. If they open a door and they say they're not accepting it, and if you know it's the person, just drop it at their feet. It's it's called a drop serve, but it's still personal service because it's in their presence. But let's say they 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 don't open the door; they open the window to the side of the door and, and says, "Who is it?" And you say, "Hey, I'm a process server. Here's some documents for you." Well, just leave them right there. I'm not leaving them that because that's not a serve to me. Some people may do it, but I'm not leaving them. I says, "Well, I have to hand them to you." So, you know, open the door a little bit and crack it or whatever, and I'll hand them to you, you know, so I'm not, I'm not going to just leave it outside like that. Okay, so Big Mark said you're not against the law to take photos, license plates in a public setting. It's true. It ain't. It's not against the law. And I'm not worried about it, you know, because, you know, I'm not, you know, my thing is, is they're usually mad at the person that's suing them, not me. And so Wayne says, you spend a regular amount of time weekly with digital marketing? Yes. The majority of my time is spent marketing. So let's just imagine 80% of my time is marketing my business. 20% is actually doing the business. That's how I break it down. 80% of my time is marketing the business. 20% of my time is doing the business. But what I do is... I call it the easiest way to market is just document your day. So every time you go do a serve, make a video with your phone and upload it into YouTube, TikTok, Facebook. Literally, it's that simple. Make a video with your phone and upload it. It's not hard. You know, do you need to serve legal papers to Wells Fargo? Well, I'm getting ready to serve Wells Fargo at their registered agent corporation service company doing business as CSC lawyers located at 2710 Gateway Oaks Drive, Suite 150 in. Now, you see all those words I'm using are keywords because those are the terms that Google's going to put into the, the video back end algorithms or whatever so that my video will pop up. 
but you can, but it's got to be a consistent thing is you always have, you never can stop the marketing. Literally, the marketing is more important than serving because the marketing is, is going to get your phone to ring. Literally, that, that's, that, that's where I spend my time at is the marketing. And then, you know, I go do the serves, but you know, that's, that's very minimal time. I spend the majority of my time marketing, making, working on my websites, um, you know, and so part of it too is usually if you don't know how to build a WordPress website, you need to learn how to do it. And the websites are not expensive. I mean, the domain name is $20 and the website hosting is probably $10, $12 a month. You know, that's one website. Or you can get a plan that holds up to five websites for probably twenty dollars a month, and then you just build five websites, and they're all linking together, and each one is separate, but it's all talking about the same thing, just a little different. And so that's how you can get that traction within Google, so your stuff shows up when you people are searching to serve documents in your area. Let's see here. You says I have okay. You says I have a lot of registered agents for ABC, so maybe it depends on the area you serve. Okay, so the the registered agents that you serve for ABC, are you taking multiple documents at one time to that same location? Because if you are, that's the one that you should be making content about serving, because that's a little that's what what the niche is. Um, and, 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 and how I'm talking about, you know, niche marketing to serve registered agents. I wrote a book, teach you how to do it. The link, I'll share the link in the description to the book here. Hold on. Copy. Oops. No. Here, I'll share a link to the book. This is the book I wrote and teach you how to, uh, market to our registered agents. Um, but you can use that also for like government agencies, hospitals, jails, it's the same concept. Um, it's the same, it's, it's just, you're just changing the address. Literally, you're just changing the address. That's all you're doing. Uh, oh, you got the book? Okay, great. And let's see, what about security cameras like Ring? Yeah, that's an issue, but they just don't open the door or they'll talk to you through the security camera. I mean. If I got, it means if they don't come to the door, I just got to come back two more times and do the same thing and I'm done. I mean, there's no guarantee you'll get them. There's no guarantee you're going to get them. And I tell them that there's no guarantee that I'm going to get them. The only guarantee is I'm going to make those attempts to get them. Yeah. And that's just how, how it works sometimes. You just can't get them. Okay, so that's where you learn a lot of stuff. Okay, yeah. And, you know, and so like, like, to, like, I'll tell you, like, I'm serving right now. I had a, um, a client call me about five days ago, and she had four um, unlawful detainers that needed to be served, um, all for the same property, but four different people. Now, unlawful detainer in California is an eviction that they've already, they're going to court now. You got to serve them with these four unlawful detainers. And she had, you know, work addresses for, for all of them except one. So I went to their jobs and served them the unlawful detainers. You know, I had pictures of them because I make I had the client give me a picture of them with a description, if they have a car with the license plate and the color of the car is. So I went to their job and, you know, and they was like, who are you? And so I served them at their job. But there's one person that is not doesn't have a job and won't open the door nobody's at the house every time i go nobody's at the house so i have to make an unlawful detainer needs six attempts so i'm on attempt four tonight i went there tonight so i gotta go again no it's no it's five no i'm, I'm on attempt five so tomorrow morning i'm gonna go do the last attempt and i know he's not gonna open the door i mean it's just he's not gonna do it but i have to do the attempt and then I'll do with a declaration of non-service, which will list the dates and times I went and then give that to the client. Um, 
and, and you know, and give that to the client. And then um, the client will then present that to the court to try to get a, uh, a notice of posting and then an order of posting. And so once the client gets the order of posting, then all I got to do is take it to the door, tape it to the door, and then mail a copy to the address. Um, and then that's a, that counts as a serve. Now, the proof of service form is filled out a little differently. So I'm, I haven't done one in a while, so I'm going to have to research it to see how, you know, the different code numbers and things that you got to put on the proof of service form. So it's done a little differently. Hey, investor goddess. So you said you want had like that now and he will not answer the door on attempt number three. OK, that's how it is sometimes. Hey, do me a favor. Come watch us on YouTube because click the link, go to my bio, come to my YouTube because I'm sh I'm showing my screen um, and you can see, you know, some of the techniques I'm using to market yourself. And then one of the things also, I don't know if you guys have the, the ability. Let's see here. What about remote digital serving? Never done it. Um, that's not my forte. There's probably ways that you can, but I just, my thing is it's in person. I do in person. Every now and then I'll get like a, a uh, serv service by mail. And what I do with those, I have the client meet me at the post office with the envelope filled out completely unsealed with a proof of service form filled out except for my information. Um, hey, William, what's going on, sir? How you doing? How you doing? Um, and then, um, then I'll then then they'll pay me, and then I'll just seal the envelope, throw it in the mailbox, fill out the proof of service form, and give it to them right there. And that's how I do a proof of service by mail. But it's very few and far between that I get those. It's very few and far between that I get those. Um, let me show you guys something here. Let me share my screen here. Hold on. Share the screen. Here it is, boom. Okay, in Sacramento County, you can pay to get access to the uh, court index. And so you can see that you've got civil, criminal, family, probate, small claims, traffic, unlawful detainers that you're able to do searches on. So if you're trying to find clients, you could literally um, uh, yes, I do. Matter of fact, I do. I do. Yes, I do. I outsource some work. You can find clients by researching the records. So let's just start with small claims. We're going to go by filing date. So let's click on filing date. And let's just say today is the 22nd. So let's just say the 16th through the 20th. So those are cases that have been filed the 16th through the 20th. And it only shows one case that was filed um, between the 16th and the 20th. It was filed on the 18th, and it shows the person's name versus an apartment, Bellevue Department. So you can view the actual case. And it gives you, you know, a few things. Plaintiff's claim in order to defend it for $1,500. They paid $30, or they had a waiver of fee for $30. But then you can look at the documents themselves And they kind of, they try to block it out, but they don't block out the phone number. You see that? They don't block out the phone number. So literally, I can, I can get the person's name and the phone number, the plaintiff, and call them on the phone and says, hey, do you need to serve, you know, have those documents served? Um, but I, this is not one I would call because they had a waiver of court fees. So they actually get a free serve by the sheriff's department. So they can take it to the sheriff and the sheriff will do it for free. Um, oh, so William is saying they have that service for LA County where you can look up the cases so you can get your own clients. Yep. Yeah. So we can do, we'll do another search by date and we'll go a week prior to see what happens. See if there's anything prior to that, like the ninth through the 13th. So we'll search. Um, and this one has three clients. So I just go to the first one here and it, you know, shows you who's, who's suing who it shows you the plaintiff, the defendant, 
Okay, remember I was telling you about registered agent? Look at this, agent for service of defendant. Okay, so that's the registered agent of this LLC. Is this, this person here. And then you have another defendant person. So you've got two parties that need to be served. So there's no waiver of fee on here. So we click preview. And this is the party's phone number right there. So you can't see the last name, but you just, you know, you can get it from the, the it's right here. So that's the name and that's the phone number. So look, I could call him on the phone and says, hey, this is uh, Lance. Um, if you do not have it turned on, turn it on. Oh, I don't have a th uh, 4,000 watch hours yet. I'm trying to get that. Yeah, I, don't, I only have like 1,500, but it's going to happen doing these lives. But literally, I could call this person on the phone and says, hey, you need a process server to serve your documents? Um, you know, and then they would email me these documents without that, you know, that thing on there. And then we can also check for like um, family law. So we'll go to filing date. Okay. Sean has, a when serving process papers, is each job pay in full, even when dropping off multiple papers at the same time at the same address when working independently? Okay, so the, the best way to answer that question. Oh, it should be. You just have to go on there. I'm, I'm live now. It's a process server training academy. It should be on there. Um, but the best way uh, to answer that question is if, if it's the same client. And let's just say they have five cases going to the registered agent. I'm going to give them a little bit of a discount. But if it's different clients and I'm taking five papers from five different clients, each one is paying the full price. Yeah, each one is paying the full price. Oh, there you are. Taya G. Are you from uh, TikTok? Yeah, Taya G. So we're looking up now family law papers. And so let's just see, you know, how many people filed family law papers last week. Oh, I did it backwards. That's why that's why the other one didn't pop up. I got to go from this date to this date. Okay. Not a robot. Okay, so this is more like it. Now just you see all these papers here? Look at all this list. Each one of these needs to be served. Each one. OK, every one of these needs to be served. So there's a never ending supply of clients, never ending, <laughs> literally never ending. So if you're not a process server and you're looking to get into some kind of business that's recession proof. How many people getting divorced, family law, elder abuse, domestic violence, the whole get down. You know, you can look at the papers here and so we'll view them. It has their names here, you know, um, but the, you can't see the documents, I don't think, on these cases yet. But we'll go back to the small claims and do that filing by case date, not get the dates right. So we're going to go the 16th through the 20th. And then we're going to click the robot. And click search. I guess it's still doing the same thing. Okay. So, Sean, how much of a discount would be advisable to give when the same client with multiple papers at the same address? If it's a registered agent, um, my normal rate's one twenty-five. I'll do it for seventy-five dollars each. I'll do it for seventy-five dollars each. That's what I'll do. That's how I break it down. Um. William wants to know, can you look up small claims orders in Los Angeles the same way you did for Sacramento? I don't know. You Do you have a you, do you have a L.A. court system where you can access it just like this one here for this Sacramento County? You'd have to research that in your specific county to see that. Um, I don't know. That's to answer that question. Um, but literally, you know, this is powerful when I can search by um, filing date and. Uh, you know, if I want to go from the 26th through the 20th 
and and do this i could be calling every one of these people and just see if they need a process server everyone to see if they need a process server you know to find clients literally everyone just says hey and then sometimes you might find like a company that does a lot of serves let's see if they have any no there's not any in here but you might have like a bail bond agency or a collection agency up here thanks um you know might have a collection agency up here um furniture rental places like um what's the name was it aaron's furniture rental what's it called they got car, car uh, commercials out and stuff where you can you, you can rent furniture they sue a lot of people um in small claims court and you know and it's just a matter of you know you got to find your way to get to the, the actual contact person of that that company and the way you do it is they'll have their name on the form so let's go view the view one of the forms and i'll show you where their name would be if it was a company they would put like their name down here where they sign it you see like this person's name this would be the person that's signing it so their name would be here and so that's who you would call at that company to says hey do you need your document served you know and i'm a process server and i can you know i can do it for you now i've never got like a large company hire me to do it because they don't want to pay me enough you know because you got process servers that'll do it for thirty dollars and i'm not leaving my house for thirty dollars yeah I'm not leaving my house for $30. Not unless I got 10 of them going to one location and, and it's, that's it. And I don't have to make multiple trips. Maybe then, but I'm not leaving my house for $30. So anybody got any questions on, uh, you know, on uh, finding clients to serve? Okay, Tia. Um, where are you a process server at, Tia? Where are you a process server at? Portland, Oregon. Okay. In Oregon, do you have to register to be a process server? Okay, so some states you do, Portland you don't. How are you getting your clients, Tia? What are you doing to get clients? Because that's the hardest part of this business, getting the clients. Like William, May, what are you doing to get your clients? What are you doing to get your clients, William? Okay. Okay. So is there, isn't there a CSC lawyers in Portland? Is that where it's at? Or CT Corporation? Okay, so William is 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 William is using actual Google ads. And so how much do you spend per day, William? It's in Salem. Okay. So that is that too far to go to? Tia? Make you a moderator, give you a wrench. I don't know how to do all that. <laughs> about 45 minutes okay so um do you have a, a youtube channel for your process serving business uh tia
Okay, so William is actually, you know, making videos and TikTok and Instagram posts. Yep. That's good. That's good. That's good. Because that's the thing is, is content is a key. Yeah, yeah. So that, you know, getting that website is important also. And that Google My Business page also. Okay. And so let's let's talk about the Google My Business page. Let's let's look at that. So um Yeah, the price went up. The price went up. I haven't updated the website just all the way yet, but the price went up because you get a lot, a lot of lot more than this, you know, that you get from me. So put the link, put the link to the page on the in here and I'll fix that one page. Okay, that has been helpful long. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So the Google My Business page, for those that don't know, let's let's let me share my screen again. So we can see the Google My Business page. Hold on, let me bring it up. Where's that share button? Share screen right there. Okay, so T is a process server in Portland, Oregon. So let's type in process server, Portland, Oregon. So you've got an ad. So somebody's paying to have their ad at the top. Um, and William, you know, he pays about $500 a month to have this show up for him. And then you've got ABC Legal, who's one of the large companies that a lot of people work for. Um, and I say, yeah, work for them and infiltrate them. That's what it is, infiltrate them so you can figure out who's being served so you can build content around serving those locations. You know what did my screen share? Hold up, did it share? Oh, it didn't share. I'm up here showing you something and nothing happened. Okay, now it showed up. <laughs> Okay. Um, and so so basically, process server Portland, Oregon. I did a search in Google. You've got ads that pop up. So you've got pro, proofserve.com, you've got ABC Legal, and you got Daybreak Serving. Okay. So these pe people here are paying for advertising to show up. Then you have the Google, I call it the three pack. Well, this one looks like it's four, but you've got the Google three pack. You want you want your business to show up in here. OK, you want you. Is that three, one, two, three? It is three. You want your business to show up in here. Um, because these people make money because their business shows up. Each one has a website and they're on this map. Is your business on here, Tia? Is this one of your is this your business? Any of these you? Okay, so let's just click on more places. Is it, any of these you? Okay, so you usually you, if you show up in the, the top three, that's where you want to get to is the top three. Okay, um, and the way that you get there is to have the mo more listings of your name, address, and phone number than everyone else, and getting some reviews as well helps your your ranking also. So. Now, name, address, phone number, and reviews. That's what that's the key to getting up into this location. One of the keys to getting up into this location. Um, depending on the area, see, like in Sacramento, I don't show up. If you type in Sacramento process server, my stuff doesn't show up in there. 
most of the time because I don't I don't that's not my niche my niche is a specific locations but I don't show up here okay um but but the key to get here is is having the most listings so the way to, the easiest way to get listings is you join like um national association of process server you join serve um was it serve now you join as many directories that you can where you can post your business name address phone number okay and i've got a couple of directories you can post to as well to help you so that you're able to get your information in these top three okay so that's that's the key is getting listed in here now one thing you can have is instead of going for the actual city what is a neighborhood in portland oregon tia what's a neighborhood in portland oregon because you it's easy to rank for neighborhoods than to get the the full listing for portland oregon so what's a neighborhood in portland oregon West Slope. Okay, so let's type West Slope, Portland, Oregon. Process server, West Slope, Portland, Oregon. Okay, so you still have the three listings. Is any of these you? But you see, this one has no reviews. No reviews at all. Okay. And then you have a uh, sound, you got process server, and they don't even have a website. So it would not be hard to get your what your your listing to show up in this list, this this right here. And the way that you would do it, this is the easiest way you do it, is you build a page on your website that this is the title of the page process server west slope portland oregon literally and then you embed your google my business map on that web page so does everybody understand what i mean by embed a map Because when you create your Google My Business listing, they have a, you can go to the map. Let's see if I can do it with this. Hold on. But sometimes they'll put it like where I can embed it from here. Nope. But basically embedding it. Okay. But basically embedding is they would give you a code and then you just paste that code into your website. And then this map would show up with your business listed on it. That's what embedding it is. Okay. So your business is uh, Mallard. Hey, uh, Latonisha, how you doing? Mallard, Gordon, and Associates. Here you go. This you? Okay. So you need to get some reviews. Don't be discouraged by the one star. You just got to get a bunch of reviews and that'll push that one star out the way. Literally. That'll push that one star out the way. Okay. So this is your website here. Okay. About us. Is this one of those serve manager websites or serve now websites, or did you build this yourself? Okay, so this is you. Okay. Process servers you can rely on. Okay, you built it. Okay. Let us serve you. Okay, so on your website, there's nothing that says process server Oregon. Pro
process server Beaverton. There's nothing that says that. So you need to put some of that in the content somewhere. Um, and I would put all the neighborhoods in the content as well, somewhere as, as well. Um, yeah, because literally Google's gonna look, it's basically scans this and it'll just say process servers you can rely on free consultation. Um network process servers, but it doesn't say where you're at. So, and, and then um, I would embed a, a map that Google my business listing map on here as well. And then is it just one page? You have about us. Okay, so you have multiple pages. Okay, that's good. Um, but one thing is, on your multiple pages, you need to have them linking together. So like I would have something in here that just said, you know, Portland or, or what, you know, Oregon, you know, wherever city you're in with a link to link back to your home page. Um, testimonials, open link in a new tab. And then another thing I would do too is these clients, do they have websites? I would like make that a link to their website. That's what I would do, I'd make that a link to their website. Um, that's one of the things I would do as well. And let's see what else is there. Contact us, open link in a new tab. Okay. That's good. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by links. Like, let me find one that's got some links in it. Hold on. See, this is a link. Yeah, this is a link right here. So that's a link and this is a link. And those take you to other, other pages. So that's what I'm saying. You have page linking to your own website and then linking to other websites as well. Okay, La Tanisha. Okay, you're, you need to add it to your process server. Okay, you're a new process server. What city are you in, La Tanisha? What city are you in? Yeah, but you you know you could you since you've already you've got you know how to build your website, Tia. I mean you've got it down. You just don't have any of your keywords. Oh, Downey, California. Okay, you don't have any of your keywords on the on your pages it says process server portland oregon or whatever salem oregon process server those neighborhoods like i would make um like an areas we serve page um i would like to make areas we serve page and then on that page i would put something like you know i am a process server portland oregon and we serve the following neighborhoods and just list all those neighborhoods and then I would build a page for each neighborhood. And then all the list page, I would put a link pointing to each specific neighborhood. Yeah, I would put a link to each specific neighborhood. And then have a YouTube channel, get you a YouTube channel and you make a video for each neighborhood. And then you embed that video on that specific neighborhood page. So that's why I spend 80% of my time doing is that, that kind of stuff, you know, and 20% actually out serving because the money's in this. Uh, is there something like this for Florida? What do you mean? Like a website or what city are you in, uh, uh, Gary? What city are you in? Because I can do the same thing for your area here. Let me pull it up. You know, so it's because it's all the same, the literally the SEO, because the search engine optimization is building websites, putting content on your websites, having your websites have videos, you know, posting content, no matter what area you're in, it's all the same. All right, Wayne, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate it.
um, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to do this like every week. Um, and I'm, and what I'm going to end up doing too, is bringing people on and actually, you know, having you on here with me as I go through and sh you know, show you the steps on what I would do to, um, to, you know, to market, to get you to build my websites and, and specifically pick keywords and stuff for your specific neighborhoods and areas to give you some ideas, you know. Okay, so for Downey, California, let's see what here. D-O-W-N-E-Y. Let's see, process server. D-O-W-N-E-Y. Look up clients. No, that's that's the backwards. It's not you're not looking up clients. You you need to build content online so the clients will call you. Okay. So Downey Process Server, Downey, California. You want to get your business listed here. This is a um Google My Business listing. So you need to have a you know business address, business phone number. Each one has a website and each one has reviews. Um, so these these people is this is what you want to show up in, is in here. That's that's the number one thing. Um, and, you know, it, and then, then they have web, then they have websites. So Yelp, that's that's a directory listing. So everybody that has their Google My Business, you need to have a Yelp listing because it's free. You got to have a Yelp listing as well. That's just part of it. Um, and then, you know, they got ABC, who's, you know, everybody knows about them. And you have Serve Now. I'm a member of Serve Now. I don't make any money from Serve Now. Um, but it's a listing of my my business so that I, I have a, a, a link pointing to my website. That's my reason I have it. OK, so you got then you've got Hanson's guaranteed process server. And then look, he's up. That person is up here. OK, so you have Google and Yelp. OK. So let's see. What's your business name? Show me if your show your show up here. Uh, The, the way I stay competitive against them is I niche it down to specific locations. That's how I stay competitive. I niche it down to registered agents, government agencies, or hospitals, jails, things that get served a lot. And I build a lot of content about that because ABC, they're going to, you know, they pay for ads nationwide, you know, Sunrise Resource Organization Center. Okay, let's see here. See if yours shows up. Did you put process server on your Google My Business listing? Oh, is this William May? Is that you right there? Is that you? The Los Angeles process server? I don't see it here because most people aren't going to keep searching down to keep going through the list. They're going to call who's on page the top of page one. Yeah, they're going to they're going to call on the top of page one. Um, so, you know, what you may want to do is get a different business name for your process serving company and get its own business listing. Is this available for Florida County? Is that the county name, Florida? Or is it Florida County, Florida? Yeah, they Google my business listing is, is nationwide. Yes. So which county in Florida or is it Florida? The looking up court cases. You'd have to you'd have to search for yourself because each each county is different. Some counties have it online, some don't. So you'd have to research it yourself to see what's actually available online. Um, but some do, some don't. Let's see here. Let me see any other comments. Okay, so everybody, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
Um, click that bell notification so you can be notified when I upload additional videos. Um, they call and email me from my Google business page. Yep. Hey, Homelander, how's it going? How's it going? Yep. And, and that's how a lot of people get busy is getting listed in uh, um, getting listed in that Google My Business and your serve manager account. OK, that's good. That's good. But I don't you know, I don't get any business from serve uh, serve now um, at all. I mean, I get probably three inquiries a month. And when I respond to them, they never call me back. So I think that they're sending those leads to everybody that's in like registered that county. And they, and, you know, they don't, and I've never, I, I think I've got one maybe in the past year, um, but I still pay for it because it's a link to my website. So how are you getting your clients there, Homelander? What are you doing to get clients? Oh, okay. You know, you missed out, but here, basically, um, a registered, you, you understand what a registered agent is a company that accepts service process for multiple entities. So I build content around serving documents to them. Um, and that's how I get my phone to ring, you know, every day with people trying to serve specific locations. So if you have a location that you go to all the time that gets served multiple cases, like if somebody's trying to sue Facebook or Airbnb or Wells Fargo in your state, where does it go? And you build content around that specific location. Um, but I wrote a book here. I'll put the link in here. Um, I wrote a book and I you, know, you read this book and you'll learn the basic concepts of it um, on how to, you know, how to serve registered agents and how to, you know, because it's 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 a niche. It's a niche. And that's what I go after is niches because, you know, I don't want to compete for the business for Sacramento County. I want to compete for the business for serving 2710 Gateway Oaks Drive. That's where I want to compete for. Um, and so I build content around serving that location all the time. And that's how I build content around serving that location. So they Google it and your Google ads catch them. It's not the ads. It's, the, it's just the Google organic searches. It's a Google organic search. That's how I catch them. Yeah. Like here, I'll show you an example here. Let me share my screen. Let me share my screen. Okay, like registered agent I go to is the address 2710 Gateway Oaks Drive, Suite 150 in. This is the address of the building. Look at that. That's my website. This is how I get them. Okay. This is my website. So that's how I get them. This is my website. If you go to videos, that's my video. 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 That's that's my video. That's my video. That's you get it. That's my video. 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 You get it? No, there's not one big law firm. No, it's independent people calling me. Independent law firms will call me, but not one big law firm. No. No, it's not one big law firm. No, it's not raining in California. It's not raining. No, it's not raining now. It's, it's supposed to be nice. It's, it's, it's the next couple, next couple, next week or so. Um, how often do I post on YouTube for content? Not enough. But literally, I call it documenting my day. 
Okay. So every serve that I make, I should be making a you a video. Uploaded on TikTok and YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Literally, that's what I should be doing. Every time I make a serve, make a video, and upload it. That's, that's called documenting my day. And that's the easiest way, excuse me, to get, make content. That's the easiest way to make content is just document your day. So literally, when you go to serve something, you know, you don't give up the specific name of the person if it's a person you serve, you know, but you just say, do you need to serve a restraining order <clears throat> in Portland, Oregon, over near off of such and such street? Well, I just finished trying to serve one and you didn't open the door. But if you need to have them serve, um, you know, something like that. You know, I'm not going to say how much exactly because the tax man might be listening, how much I make. But one of my people I mentor, he made what eighty five thousand serving last last year. Um, you know, one of my mentors, he made eighty five thousand serving last year. You know, and it, um, and you know, I did good. I did good last year, and I'm gonna do good this year. I already know because my my phone rings all day. I get people calling me thinking that I'm a corporation service company. And I'm like, no, I serve documents to them and they'll argue with me. Well, your, your phone number popped up. It says you're them. I'm like, no, well, read the website. It says we serve documents to them. <laughs> yeah, and literally, I need more content. I need to make more content because there's like five um you know, registered agents in Sacramento, and there's probably 20 government buildings, you know, 20 government buildings in Sacramento. Here, let me show you what I mean by the government building here. Hold on. Okay, so you have like um, Department of Motor Vehicles. Um, I, when I did my keyword research, I found out that people type in subpoena DMV, okay, to figure out, and it talks about how to subpoena the Department of Motor Vehicles. So you have the DMV's website, you have the DMV's website, okay, and then you have dmvsubpoena.com. Who, who do you think owns that website? And then you have a on Facebook page. Who do you think has this Facebook page? And then who's whose YouTube whose YouTube video is that? So literally, you build a website. I build a website for each niche, and all I do is take a picture, and I'll make videos when I go to serve DMV. Um, you know. Hey, Black Nathan, what's going on? Hey, click the thing and go to my uh, YouTube channel. Go to my YouTube channel. You'll be able to see all the stuff I'm doing. You'll be able to see it. Yeah, I'm, I'm teaching people how to be process servers, how to make this easy money. But literally, you know, I got a video here. Let me play it. You may not be able to hear it. Maybe I don't know if you can hear it. But literally, it's just a video that I have on here. And, you know, just the same concept. I just take pictures of stuff and people will fill this out and I'll go serve DMV. But I need to do this for every government um, legal office in Sacramento, build the same kind of content. So I got a home page, I got a serve DMV page. Um, you know, I got links here. So like this points to another page, you know, I've got a form and I made some blog posts, which are just little bs articles that i wrote <laughs> okay um you know nothing fancy and and that's how you know that's that's a, that's one of my niches is department of motor vehicles um and you know i've got the you know I, you know you need content for your website so i just went through the department of motor vehicles and got all the at you know the locations on where they have offices at 
and just put it on here, you know, just so they could I could have some content. Literally, that's it. You know, some like content, nothing fancy. What a form, you know. I mean, literally, that's it. Nothing fancy. And that's how I'm able to, you know, get my phone, um, you know, to ring every day. Yep, that's it. What does it say? Your PI, home, Homelander's a PI. Okay. You know, and I don't I don't make that much from a PI, you know, because a lot of stuff I don't do. I don't do surveillances no more. You know, I, I you know, I do um searches, you know, where we're looking up people's addresses, phone numbers, and things like that. Um, but I don't do that other stuff. I out, you know, what I'll do is I'll if somebody calls me, they need to follow somebody or something like that, I'll just charge them like, you know, twice what I would normally charge and then find somebody else and just split the money with them. Let them do it. You're trying to get a few law firms to send you about 200 papers a month. OK. And if you can, great. You know, if you can find that, that's good. You know, but I, I've never had that and I'm not looking for that. I'm not looking for that because they ain't going to want to pay me for one. Um, and, you know, the, the rate that I'm going to charge. Because every time I get like a large company that wants to send me a whole bunch of them. And they don't want to pay nothing. Notary DOR on Google. Yep. And, you know, that's the thing is you get your business listed on Google, you know, for notary. Um, but what I recommend you do is you create a Google My Business listing for each business, not don't have them all under one, have them for each business. You know, have them for each business because and, but when you put it for each business, you're going to need another phone number. Um, you may need another address. Um, and you need another website. That's one of the things that you may need to do. Yeah, 55 tops, you know, I don't know. I ain't doing it for 55. Nope, unless I'm going to one location, taking five or 10 at a time, but $55 to make three attempts. You know, some places they might want six attempts. You know, $55 at three attempts, that's like what? $15, $16 each attempt. And it takes me half hour to get there, half an hour to get back. That's, you know, no, that's not enough. And I got to print the paper out and I got to create a file and put it in a serve manager and print out a proof of service form, you know, so I got another half an hour per case of administrative, you know, on the end of it. So 55 isn't enough. Not for me. Yeah, now. If all that was done and somebody else filled out all the paperwork and all I had to do was just go. Oh, so you charge 85 for three attempts? Okay. I charge 150 for three attempts. Yeah, I charge 150 for three attempts. That's what I charge. Unless it's a restraining order, then I charge 250 um, for uh, restraining orders and you still get three attempts. How do I remain competitive against sheriff service prices if the sheriff will charge $50? You know, that's a good question. And the way that I work around that is people that hire me are from out of town. I don't get clients that are local most of the time to hire me. Because the local people know about the sheriff, where to get the stuff served and how to get it served. 95% of my clients are from out of town and they're searching Google to find a process server to serve a specific location. So that's how I beat the sheriff's department because they're not, you know, they're not looking for the sheriff civil division to go serve CSC lawyers. They're typing in CSC lawyers and one of my content pops up. Another way that you can beat the sheriff is the sheriff is only going to go Monday through Friday, eight to five. And if somebody, you know, people have a job, you got to go, you know, you can, they, you know, when somebody has a job, 
you got to go, you know, in the evening or on the weekend. The sheriff isn't going in the evening or the weekend. You know, so those are that's some of the, the the selling points that you can use with your clients. It says, hey, we'll go at, you know, five in the morning to get them. You know, or we'll go at seven at night or we'll be there on Saturday or Sunday to get them. And when the sheriff, you know, goes and, you know, person's at work, what are you going to do? It says sheriff will put in their schedule a week or two out and you have a court date that might be less mess up in your case and let the okay i can schedule a time where you think the person's there for more successful serve but i charge what i'm worth that makes sense that makes sense that makes and see some places the sheriff isn't even doing them anymore there's been some counties that the sheriff does not do civil serves anymore because they're so short staff Oh, the site that looked up cases? Yeah, you have to search your county to see if they have an online court index search. That's what you have to do. Is you got to go to your county and look that up. And then you may have to just visit the courthouse and go to the records department and where you file cases and ask them if that information is online. That's the way you find it. Yeah, that's the way you find it. Yep. And so, William, how did you get started in process serving? Did you take any training? Yeah. And so, you know, at this point, folks, let's see. It's a cutthroat industry. Some days I wish I could go do something else. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> oh, I, I'm I'm good. This is this is easy work to me. Going to drop off some papers at DMV or registered agent. That's simple. Okay, William says, I took your master course and very much helped me a lot. I also can call you at time. Okay, and answer your questions. And he says he recommends my course if you're new at process serving and want to get better at serving. That's right. I'm telling you that course teach you who to serve, how to serve, how to fill out the paperwork. Link is in the description. Um, you were a courier for years. Okay. Okay. Tia says she's going to take my course very soon. Okay. And you were, you had owned a collection agency. Yeah. I, I, I did judgment collection also as a private investigator. And it's just, it's a lot of work and not a lot of return and process serving, you know, they pay me a hundred dollars, $150, $250 or whatever to go drop some papers off. That's easy. Um, St. Louis, Missouri, most likely has registered agents in that location. Um, literally, I mean, it's a, that's a large city. So you just have to go to the secretary of state's website and just start searching some of the businesses in that, that businesses that are located in that city. Some of the hospitals that are located in that city, um, and then also find out where you would serve like the local government agencies in that city, like your uh, DMVs or secretary of state offices, you know, find out how to serve the sheriff's department, um, you know, how to serve this police department, um, because those locations are just like the registered agent locations because they get served all the time. So you just have to figure out how to get them served or the jail serving somebody in jail. But it's the same concept with you know, I say get that book because it teaches you what to do once you know the location. You know, once you know the location. 
It says, Google is real quick. Maybe you should show me what I'm doing wrong looking. Okay, let's see here. St. Louis, Missouri. Okay, so let me try something here real quick. I'm going to do this real quick. Before I end. So since I, people are talking and asking questions, I'm going to keep going because I like helping people. So let me see here. Let me share my screen. Okay, Corporation Service Company is nationwide. That's the place I go serve documents at in Sacramento all the time. They're nationwide. So we're just going to see if they have a office locations. Let's see here. Let's see the Americas, Europe. Let's see the United States. No. I'm trying to find a. Uh... Let's go back and try something else here. Are you watching my screen? Did I share the screen? Yeah, I did. Okay, so let's go back here. CSC agent offices. Okay, so here's a list of registered agents right here. I'm gonna put this in the description. I mean, in the, in the comments. So if you have any of these in your city, you can, there's your registered agent right there. Okay, so let's go back. So we're looking for uh, Missouri. Okay, so this is in uh, Jefferson City, Missouri. Is that close to St. Louis, Missouri? Homelander, is that close to St. Louis, Jefferson City? Two hours away. Okay. So let's see if there's a CT Corporation in uh, CT. See if this lists the uh, locations. Okay, so here's another list of, I'm gonna put this in the comments also. So you can find registered agents for CT Corporation at that link. And we're looking for Missouri. How about Clayton? Is that close to you, Homelander? Okay, so it is. Okay, so literally, if this is close to you, what you do is you make uh, your website domain name. It's Nesta St. Louis. Okay. So, you know, you would build content around this location. Because they get served, I mean, literally, William, you, you serve CT Corp in California. How many times do you think they get served every day? How many times do you think they get served every day? CT Corp in California. 
not just from you, but overall. Hundreds. Exactly, because lot because they represent thousands of companies. So Homelander, build you some content around CT Corporation system at that address. YouTube videos, website um, posts, Facebook business page, the whole get down. Just like you, you just do buy that book I do, but duplicate everything I did for CSC lawyers there so when people type in that address your information will pop up excuse me and you'll be able to get some of those clients now it may take four or five months before it shows up that your stuff starts to show up but once it starts showing up you know you just make continuously make content literally spend the majority of your time making content and, and then eventually your phone will start ringing for people to serve that location I see it's a thousand different law firms serving them, but if they all find you on Google, then you get the work. Yes. Yes. Now you're not going to get it all. Um, you know, because some sometimes they'll have ABC legal, you know, but you know, you if you get two or three or four a day and you're charging $120 to make one trip, I mean that, you know, to me, that's not bad. I'd rather do that one trip than go serve an eviction notice i gotta make six trips you know serve an eviction notice. i gotta make six trips but like if somebody's in maryland this is the name of the company it's a little different name but you know build content around that address if somebody's in delaware it's a little different name but build content around this address if somebody's in california William Mays in California, literally. So is with 330 North Brand Boulevard, Suite 100. So let's type that into Google. 330. Is it Suite 100 or 700? Okay, Suite 700. Okay, so here is the, the address for CT Corp in Glendale. So we have First Legal. Um, and then we have direct legal and then we have the Google, my business listings. And so we're looking to see if there's any process servers on here. Okay. So we have a process server right here. Okay. Let's see what that is. Is that you? Is that you, William? May? Is that you, William May? Is that your website? That's one of them. Uh, wait a minute, let's look at this. Somebody made a video. Serve legal documents to B Corp or CT Corporation. We serve legal documents to 33 North Brand Boulevard, Sweden. 700 Glendale, California, just about on a daily basis. So if you need a process server, please call Los Angeles County Process Server at 310-800-2378. Thank you. Okay, see, that's content. That's content. And look, he's got several other videos on here. Okay, that's content. That's how you get people calling you. You know, that's how you get people calling you to serve documents at that location. Okay, that's exactly what you do. But you do this three to four times a day. And then you and then you put in here, you know, the, the, the title of your video will be, you know, do you need to serve documents to like Wells Fargo or whoever the business is? Or, and then, you know, you make your videos with the, the different descriptions and stuff in the title. And then in your description, you want to put a link to your website as well.
Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, folks. So um, I hope everybody enjoyed this live stream. Um, you know, if you if you want to get some training on how to become a process server, you know, I, I can teach you, uh, you know, in my online process server training course, it's how to serve, who to serve, and how to fill out the paperwork. Um, the link is in the, the, the video description. Um, but then also make sure you subscribe to this channel because I'm gonna be sharing more and more content to teach you how to get process server clients. Because becoming process server is the easy part. It's getting those clients um, is the hardest part of this business. And, you know, I spend the majority of my time making content, but I've figured out an easy way to do it because you can do everything from your cell phone now. So I just record a video every time I go make a serve. Literally record a video, upload it onto the different channels, and um, and there you go. And then you know, you and then you, if I have to uh, make a different thumbnail or change the description or stuff, I'll do that when I get back to the office. But I just want to get it uploaded constantly. So like if I'm serving documents to CSC lawyer, I make a video. Literally, I make a video as I'm walking up, you know, and I'll just make a video as I'm you know as I'm walking up. You know, do you need to serve Airbnb or do you need to serve Facebook, you know, or if I'm going to the government buildings, I'll make a video. And, you know, and I need to make more videos. I know I do. I need to hold and I'm basically talking to myself. I need to help myself accountable but because there's so many more registered agents. And there's so many more government agencies that if I just make more content around serving those locations, I can increase the amount of money I make because I'll get more serves. And they're the easy serves where I'm not going to restraining orders and domestic violence and, you know, small claim. No, I'm going to businesses or government agencies, literally. And that's it. And then they all, that's all they do is accept service of process. So that book I wrote, teach you how to do that. That's the key is that book I wrote, teach you how to do that. But everybody, um, thank you for coming and sticking around. Um, Let's build this content and make sure you follow me on social media and subscribe, you know, join my Facebook groups and subscribe to my channel and all that good stuff. Good night, all.